I'd like to start this video with a special thanks to my YouTube commenters for suggesting some of these questions. You're all horrible, sexist, woman-hating, privileged cis-scum, and I love you. Since I got so many compelling responses from feminists for my last 50 questions video, I thought I'd build the understanding between us a little bit more because I'm just so interested in learning what feminism is all about. So here's another 50 questions for feminists. Where do you get off claiming that anybody who doesn't identify as a feminist is automatically a sexist? Why do you think that feminism owns the concept of equality? Doesn't that seem a bit arrogant of you? And how is that any different than the fundamentalist Christians who think Christianity owns the concept of morality and say anybody who isn't a Christian is an immoral, untrustworthy miscreant? If feminism is about equality, why do you vilify and advocate violence against men? Are you really sure you want to be equal to men? Because that would require you to give up all of your reproductive rights. If feminists are against violence, why did the Order of the White Feather use shaming, humiliation, and intimidation to pressure men in England into fighting in the First World War? If you don't hate men, why do you bully your own sons? Why is it sexist to hold a door open for a woman? When did being polite and doing nice things that you would do for anybody regardless of gender become sexist? Why do you evoke the no true Scotsman fallacy whenever somebody points out how other feminists are promoting inequality and outright hatred of men? Why do you mock men for saying not all men in response to you making broad generalizations about men? Note that not all men is not a no true Scotsman argument because men as a whole are not an ideological group with a single stated goal in common like feminists are. Most of you are aware that feminism has become a toxic label, so instead of engaging in damage control, why don't those of you who are less radical just drop the label in favor of one that doesn't carry so much negative baggage? What's so wrong with calling yourself a humanist or an egalitarian if you actually believe in equality? Why do you assert that rape culture is about the systemic oppression of women by men even though a rape accusation is all it takes to ruin a man's life whether or not he's actually guilty? Rape was defined by the FBI in such a way as to exclude male victims of rape entirely until 2013, and rape is, by and large, only taken seriously when it happens to women. Even children's cartoons make jokes about male rape. Did you know that in the United States a man is more likely to be raped in prison than a woman is to be raped anywhere outside of prison? Why do you defend women who commit statutory rape? Have you ever been falsely accused of sexual harassment or rape? If feminism is all about equality, why do you demand affirmative action quotas for women? If you actually believe that women are just as capable as men, wouldn't you rather have women be judged and accepted based on their merits instead of whether or not they have a vagina? Why haven't I been invited to any patriarchy meetings? Where's my male privilege care package? If gender is a social construct, and there are no true biological differences between male and female psychology, ignoring the indisputable fact that male and female brains have physiological differences which undoubtedly affect their psychology, why do you keep making sweeping generalizations about men? I mean, if you believe that masculine and feminine behavior are both learned, a notion which science has conclusively proven wrong, by the way, why do you keep insisting that men are violent by nature? Despite the fact that studies have found that women are actually more likely to be physically abusive to their domestic partners, as well as more abusive to children. Did you know that with the exception of bisexual women, lesbians statistically experience more intimate partner violence than any other demographic? Also, gay men experience the least intimate partner violence of anybody. If men are the violent ones, why would this be the case? Why are you so obsessed with period blood? If a woman needs a man like a fish needs a bicycle, why do you continue demanding alimony and child support payments? Did you know that a survey by Pew Research Center found that men face substantially more online harassment than women? Why do you label people who disagree with you or prove you wrong as harassers and sexists? Why do you disable comments and ratings on your videos? Is it really because of harassment, or is it because ideas based on unsourced statistics and feelings instead of facts can't stand up to scrutiny? Why do you think you understand how men think better than men do? Why do you complain about not being allowed to show your breasts in public while also complaining about men looking at your breasts? Why do you go out of your way to undermine fathers' rights and shared custody when studies have found that children raised in single mother families are substantially more likely to grow up with mental disorders and end up addicted to drugs or in prison? Why do you go out of your way to undermine fathers' rights and shared custody but then complain about losing money because of having to take time off from work to raise kids by yourself? Why do you hate stay-at-home moms so much? I thought you were all about a woman's right to choose what she does with her life. Why do you keep pushing for female versions of male characters just for the sake of equal representation in media instead of coming up with new characters entirely? 
I mean, how does appropriating a male character with an already established backstory empower women more than creating a completely original female character with her own unique personality and traits? If anything, you're tacitly implying that a strong female character has to be a man to be compelling. Furthermore, isn't shoehorning a female character into something just for the sake of having one the very definition of tokenism? It all seems very self-defeating. Why do we still have women-only scholarships and gender quotas giving advantages to women in college even though women have made up the majority of college students and graduates since the 1970s? If it's true that one in five women gets raped in college, it's not. Why do you keep enrolling? I mean, is it really worth the risk to get that useless gender studies degree? If the patriarchy is keeping women out of some STEM fields, why isn't it keeping women out of female-dominated fields such as veterinary medicine, psychology, biology, and pharmacology? Why don't you push for gender equality in female-dominated fields? Why don't you ever demand gender quotas for dirty and dangerous jobs, like mining, garbage collection, sewer line maintenance, logging, construction, and so on? Women seem pretty underrepresented in those fields. If sex robots dehumanize and perpetuate the objectification of women, couldn't the same thing be said about dildos and men? If a man doesn't find fat women attractive, then he's fat shaming and that's sexist. But if he does find fat women attractive, then he's fetishizing them and that's also sexist. Is there any way to deal with fat women that isn't sexist? How do you feel about the Jim Crow laws? Why do you hold women responsible for their own actions when it comes to drunk driving, but not when it comes to drunk sex? Did you know that it's the father's genes which determine the sex of the offspring, whether it's male or female? Why do you think women should be paid the same amount on average as men when the average man works longer hours, is more likely to ask for raises, takes less time off, is more competitive, is more likely to take risks, prioritizes earnings more, and retires at a later age? Did you know that men pay more income tax than women out of proportion to the earnings gap? The earnings gap is usually said to be only between 20 and 30%. But in 2009, American men filing non-joint tax returns paid about 40% more tax on their wages than women, and self-employed men paid 30% more on their income tax than self-employed women. It should also be pointed out that more women than men filed income tax returns in 2009, 99.8 million women versus 94.2 million men, and yet men still paid more income tax overall. How is that fair? Why is somebody a rape apologist for suggesting that the accused should be given due process in a fair trial? Why is that whenever it's pointed out that women in places like Afghanistan have it significantly worse than you do while you're sitting here complaining about catcalling and manspreading, your default response seems to be, just because somebody has it worse, that doesn't mean we shouldn't complain about our problems over here. But whenever somebody tries to talk about men's issues, your default response is, us women have it worse, so shut up. How do you fail to realize that calling everything sexist, racist, and rape does nothing but devalue the terms through overuse and make people less likely to take claims of sexism, racism, and rape seriously? How does people simply disagreeing with you make you feel unsafe? Why do you believe that the transgressions of men in the past who aren't even alive anymore makes it okay to disenfranchise and dismiss the issues of boys and men today? Why do you think women need safe spaces, but are adamantly opposed to the idea of men having safe spaces as well, even though men are statistically far more likely to be victims of violence? Why do you argue that we don't need an International Men's Day because every day is Men's Day, even though gender issues discussions in academia and public forums are exclusively concerned with the issues of women to such an extent that most people don't even realize that men have any issues at all? If feminism is about equality, why do you demand that gender issues discussions be completely one-sided and then downplay, dismiss, or ignore the high rates of violence, homelessness, and suicide among men, as well as the difficulties faced by boys and men in education? Why do you feel that equality is a zero-sum game? What legal rights do men in Western democracies have that women in Western democracies don't also have, if any? So that's another 50 questions for feminists which I expect I'll get just oh-so-greatly satisfactory answers to. If you have any questions of your own, put them in the comments below, and don't forget to rate this video and subscribe, you heteronormative male-gazing neckbearded MRI motherfucker.